In the early 1970s, governments around the world recognized that the health of our oceans was under threat. People were using the vast waters as dumping grounds for all kinds of substances, including hazardous wastes. As a maritime nation, Canada joined with other countries to draft the London Convention, an agreement to stop uncontrolled dumping of pollution into the marine environment. In 2000, Canada also joined the London Protocol, an updated and more stringent international agreement on disposal of substances at sea. Environment Canada's Disposal at Sea program is part of Canada's commitment to meeting its international obligations and to protecting our marine environment. 70% of Canada's imports arrive here by way of marine shipping. That means heavy traffic along our coastlines. To keep these ocean channels open and safe, the waterways are regularly dredged. But what to do with the material that is dredged up? Dumping it at sea could have unwanted effects on the marine environment. And I'll be taking the top environment Canada's Disposal at Sea program is the way we regulate and monitor what is dumped and where. Under the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, 1999, anyone who intends to dump any substance at sea must have a permit. The requirements are strict. Only a limited list of substances is considered. Dredged material, fish wastes, vessels, rocks, and other inert inorganic geological matter. No toxic or hazardous material can be dumped at sea. For every permit issued, an environmental assessment is first conducted and approved. Then, Environment Canada, along with other relevant agencies, such as Fisheries and Oceans, Transport Canada, or the provincial government, conducts a scientific review of the environmental assessment. A permit is granted only when there are no other practical alternatives or when disposal at sea is the environmentally preferable choice. The Canadian Environmental Protection Act contains waste assessment guidance that helps with this decision. The Disposal at Sea program actively promotes waste reduction while managing risks and monitoring results. In the Atlantic region, most permits are for the disposal of fish waste. Newfoundland and Labrador has 40 to 50 active disposal sites. Many permits are issued, but the quantities for each permit are usually small. Fish processing plants in the area are often isolated, making it difficult to recycle fish waste. In some cases, the applicant recycles the waste but gets a disposal at sea permit as a backup in case the rendering plant or other recycler is unavailable for part of the season. Newfoundland and Labrador's disposal sites are located away from shipping traffic and channels. They are high energy places Tides, wind, waves, and currents disperse the waste and prevent the organic material from building up and interfering with oxygen levels in the waters. In recent years, an increasing number of permits have been issued for the material dredged in areas off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador where there is oil development underway. In the Atlantic region, most dredged material disposal sites are in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, along the Northumberland Strait, and around Prince Edward Island. On the Gulf shore of New Brunswick and along the coastline of Prince Edward Island, the dynamic shorelines and shifting sandbars often cause material to drift into the channels that lead to small craft harbors. This in turn blocks fishing vessels from reaching their fishing grounds. To clear these channels, suction dredging equipment is often used. Floating dredges use a cutter head device to displace the sediment and then transport it by suction through a floating pipe to a disposal site which may be located as far as a kilometer away. These disposal sites are often located in the near shore area, so the natural balance of moving sediment is maintained. The St. John Harbor in New Brunswick is the source of the largest volume of ocean disposal material in the Atlantic region. Large amounts of sediment are carried downstream and into the harbor each year during the spring freshet. It is an ongoing cycle of dredging and disposal to keep the harbor clear. Dredging is also used for large-scale marine construction projects, harbor expansion, infrastructure development, and offshore oil and gas activities. Along Nova Scotia's rocky coastline, with its many natural protected harbors, there is less dredging. Here, it is easier to reuse fish waste for fertilizer, 
fish meal, and other products, so fewer permits are needed. In the Quebec region, the disposal sites are located on the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Dredging is conducted mostly along the Gaspésie and the Magdalen Islands. The small craft harbors and waterways in these areas require regular maintenance dredging to clear the Gulf's ever-shifting sands. On Quebec's north shore, a few permits are issued annually to fish processors for relatively small amounts of fish waste. In Canada's north, there is not much disposal at sea. Just one permit has been issued yearly for the disposal of muskox remains. The material is placed on the Arctic sea ice and falls through when the ice melts in the spring. To ensure that the local marine ecosystem is protected, Environment Canada demands proof that the muskox are free of brucellosis, a highly infectious disease that can be transmitted to humans. Strict conditions are imposed through the permit to ensure that the wastes will be dispersed on the sea floor to decompose or be consumed through natural scavenging. However, disposal at sea in the north may change as interest in Arctic petroleum development increases. Oil and gas exploration and extraction are infrastructure intensive and would likely require dredging and disposal at sea. In the Pacific region, most of the disposal sites are in southern British Columbia. Here, an average of one million cubic meters of material are disposed of each year. Construction generates debris. Waterways need regular dredging. Ports require dredging to accommodate ships at dock. All of this material must be disposed of. But BC's mountainous coasts have very little room for landfill sites. Disposal at sea is a reasonable alternative. BC's ocean disposal sites are deep, some more than 200 meters, and that minimizes the likelihood of conflicts with fish habitat, marine navigation, or recreational uses. Site monitoring is a critical component of the Disposal at Sea program, providing valuable data for interpreting the effects of disposal activities. During the term of a permit, operations are subject to inspections by Environment Canada at any time. These surveillance and inspections at load and disposal sites, as well as at random representative sites, are to ensure compliance with the conditions of the permits. Monitoring techniques, such as remotely operated vehicles, multi-beam bathymetry, and side-scan sonar, provide a picture of the physical effects of disposal on the sites. Sediment samples are collected at the disposal sites. Depending on water depth, samples are collected using grab samplers, sediment corers, or scuba divers. The samples are analyzed at labs to ensure the environmental assessment correctly predicted the physical, chemical, and biological effects of the disposal at sea. The laboratory results, along with information collected from other monitoring activities to assess the overall conditions at the disposal site, help answer the question, was the marine environment protected and used in a sustainable fashion? Overall, the monitoring of disposal sites enables the government to accommodate the legitimate needs of commercial dredging, excavation, and disposal of fish wastes, as well as to allow continued access to the disposal sites. Monitoring also provides the information we need to adjust site use if required, and to identify future research and development needs. Environment Canada's Disposal at Sea program ensures that regulated ocean disposal continues to be a sound waste management practice consistent with sustainable use of the oceans. If you suspect illegal disposal at sea, contact the nearest regional office of Environment Canada or regional enforcement staff. For further information and contacts, go to our website.